Good morning. Welcome to the brief. I'm Barry with BarryIndependent.com. If you're one of those people that's saying to yourself right now, I didn't get a notification for this live stream. This is a video, pre-recorded, not a live stream. So, there's that. Why is the video not a live stream? Well, because where I'm currently sitting doesn't have Wi-Fi. And so, I prioritized being able to sit here on a relatively cool July morning and do the brief rather than being where Wi-Fi is. Thus, pre-record. Now, as always, if you're new here, do the standard YouTube things, please, assuming you want to be here. Subscribe, ring the little bell icon, leave a comment for the algorithm. If you're not new here, you know what to do. Share the show with somebody that you love, please and thank you. And as always, the show is brought to you by refugemedical.com, of which I'm the founder and CEO. We'll talk more about them later. I have a brief here, uh, written by the Dance Monkeys, intel at barrenindependent.com, who have reminded me this morning, uh, they said something to the effect of, uh, for FYSA, for your situational awareness, real monkeys are better than AI monkeys, and they come with the added bonus of fleas on occasion. So, their concern being, I guess, tongue-in-cheek, that please, dear boss, don't replace us with the robots. And that's what we're going to talk about in the brief this morning, is AI. Again, cuz. Also, just kind of, uh, you know, minor things going on in the background of our nation-state. CIA Director Burns current CIA director Burns has recently, uh, the CIA director has been upgraded to a cabinet level position by the Biden administration. That's largely ceremonial, not a big deal, comma. Director Burns, yep. Let's just guess whose uh, travel logs and appointment book you could find his name in. He who did not hang himself. Yeah. Yep, Jeffrey Epstein. Confirmed. Confirmed relationship with CIA Director Burns in the Biden administration, now cabinet level position. Coincidence, I'm sure. I'm sure. To the brief. It's been a long summer for the film industry as actors and writers are still on strike. And for those who would say, by the way, Bear, I can't hear you. There's bugs in the background. Yup. Part of why I'm here. Because I can't hear anything but them. And I'm cool with it. And if you're like, yeah, but when the world ends, I'm going to grab my bug out bag and bug out to the wilderness... You might get used to the sound of bugs. It's a thing, yo. The union that represents about 160,000 actors, SAG-AFTRA, S-A-G-A-F-T-R-A, joined the Writers Guild of America by going on strike last Friday. This may not seem like a big deal for those not involved in the industry, but this actually has cascading ramifications outside of just a few production delays. The standoff stalls labor and places a chokehold on the flow of money for key industries in the Hollywood area. And, with as long as this is lasting, it may end up costing over $3 billion before the strikes end. Businesses providing services, catering, product rentals, you name it, rely on this industry to survive. It's the largest industry in Southern California. That's probably an indicator. Bob Dykes of Galpin Studio Rentals told ABC News, quote, Everybody here is affected. Restaurants here are affected. Probably gasoline stations are affected. It's the trickle-down effect. It's our biggest business in Southern California. Other than wages and benefits, one of the issues on the table is the need for protections for actors as artificial intelligence has the capability to use or abuse images of actors, creating content with their voices and their faces, also known as deep fakes. I love 
these memes that are going around on the interwebs right now. If you get on some uh, like red pilled Instagram pages, uh, to the extent that they'll let you actually look at those posts, you know, false information view anyway. I definitely want to see that. When you throw that little uh, false information flag up or altered video flag up, I'm always going to watch it, by the way, Instagram. Like always, 100% chance I'm clicking it now. And I love these comparisons of, you know, Joe Biden from 20 years ago and 10 years ago to today, just visually, and Pelosi and Clinton and all these other reptilian overlords, man. Like, they look like people in masks. They 100% look like people in masks. Um, I love that. What happens when AI gets a hold of that? Deep fakes. Because here's the thing, right? We know it's a thing. The military industrial complex, the technology that they are currently using is eh, 20 years ahead of um, the technology that we have available to us as civilians. 20 years ahead. I was in a desert with some people whose job it is to prosecute warfare for the United States of America, and there was some downtime in between training reps, and so everybody was just playing with their equipment, and a guy said to me, hey man, you ever seen these, and pulls out his nods, and I'm like, yeah, I've seen nods, PBS 14s, PBS 31s, he goes, yeah, but have you seen these? Dude, looked through them. Uh, insane. Insane. He goes, yeah, don't drop them. Those are $65,000 a pair. Whoa, bro. Whoa. What kind of plates are you running? Oh, we got level four plates in. And dude had his carrier off. I pick his carrier up. I couldn't even feel plates in there. I'm like, you have level four plates in here? He goes, yeah. Like, what do they weigh? It's like, oh, they're like one and three quarter pounds of plate. Okay. And then a pair of binos. A $130,000 pair of binos that was a combination of night vision and thermal that I could see individual rocks on the side of a mountain eight miles away in the dark, in the pitch black. And anything with a thermal signature popped right up on screen. That was, I don't know, two, three years ago. And they had had that for a while. And that's just a minor example, right? So if the people who are out there doing the things on behalf of the United States of America have access to that technology now, and AI is just coming onto the world stage now for public consumption, how long do you think that has existed in the military industrial complex? Real question here is how many of the things, how many of the pieces of production from the military industrial complex have we been exposed to for the last couple of decades that were artificial? That were deep fakes? Like, this government has felt make-believe for a long time it wouldn't surprise me to find out in actuality oh it is it is make-believe and it has been for 20 freaking years back to the brief in fact <clears throat> ai artificial intelligence technology is the quote wild card in the contract breakdowns with the screen actors guild and others according to ap news Actors and writers alike fear they could be replaced by computer-generated content if they are not given protections. This is such new territory for everyone that it makes negotiations difficult to navigate with respect to the future. Moreover, quote, it's easy to marginalize what we do because it's entertainment, end quote, said actor and writer Jonathan McLean. Quote, but I feel on some level we are, as far as this tech conversation is concerned, a little bit of a canary in the coal mine. This is an important moment, 
and we've got to really make a decisive stand, end quote. If protections are not provided for actors, and if this is truly a canary in the coal mine, then this has huge implications for the future of a new sort of legislative cybersecurity that would arise for the entire nation. If there are no protections for using someone's likeness without their consent, that could lead to very serious ethical concerns for the future. Since AI is developing at such a mind-blowing speed, this could soon become a real issue for many average folks using social media. If, 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 if. Let's just say, hypothetically, we pass an international treaty that you cannot use someone's likeness, their imagery, or their audio, like their voice, without their permission for AI. What in the world makes you think that even with those laws in place, that they, the big they, wouldn't abuse it anyway? How many environmental laws do we have? We still have, like, industries that just dump chemicals into fresh water, right? How many banking laws are in place? And we still have banks that just break the law left and right. How many election laws are in place? And we still have politicians that just, you know, were selected, not elected. It's the illusion of lawfulness, right? And then even then, right? Man's law versus God's law. One could argue that there's the applicability here of make no graven images. Make no facsimiles. You want the real stuff only, not the make-believe. AI concerns me deeply. I'm not afraid of anything, but I have concerns. And AI is one of those things, especially when we think about how much screen time the children and young adults partake in daily, who already, because of the underdevelopment of their prefrontal cortex, already by their very nature, by the way that the creator made them, have a hard time discerning the difference between make-believe and reality. And we're going to pump their brain full of stuff that is literally make-believe. It has zero substance. It's not real at all. And then you backfill that lack of reality with politically motivated agendas. Whether that be <clears throat> climate change or socialism, which of course we know leads to communism or um, one world government or universal basic income uh, or, you know, ESG, environmental, social, and governance score type bull crap, all that being generated by a computer that has no morals and no ethics other than what it was provided with by its uh, developer, pushing literal make believe nonsense into the young, impressionable brains of what will soon be the next generation of air quote voters in this country. How soon does AI get incorporated into the public education sphere? Like, there's big implications here. Another, um, I saw a post somewhere on the interwebs pontificating that perhaps the reason that this um, Screen Actors Guild strike is and and stick with me here. What do, why do I care about the actors? Ah, eh, canary in the coal mine. A economic indicator here, an economic indicator here. The reason that this strike is drug on, said some random person on the internet, is that uh, part of the issue is that writers want royalties, they basically want pay for their likeness being used in streaming services. Because a streaming service, Netflix, Amazon Prime, whatever, they get paid 
up front, the actor gets paid up front to perform the work. Then after that, said work lives forever on the internet and it can be accessed thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of times over and over and over again. And there's no residual income for that. And so that has become a sticking point for some of these actors. Said person on the internet pontificated that the reason that the streaming services will not negotiate for residual income in that uh, particular instance is because then the streaming services would be required to expose the actuality of their viewership, how many people are partaking or not partaking of their services. And the assumption is that it's far fewer people that are actually using their services than what their stock valuation reflects. Similar to the Twitter situation before Elon bought it, where 80% of all accounts were bots or Twitter employees, right? Which vastly drove up the price of that entity because something moving over there in the woods that vastly drove up the price of that entity entity because their um, their user numbers were inflated fivefold. Well, imagine if Netflix has to publicly admit that they only have half as many actual users as what they've said that they've had. That a bunch of those are ghost accounts, right? Because you can set up multiple users on one account, right? What does that do to their stock price? It tanks it. It All those streaming services throws their valuation in the dirt in a matter of moments. What does that do in an already mm, unstable economic environment? That's one more nail in the coffin of the American economy, which would fall squarely into the tech sector. And the bank failures that we've seen thus far have all been more or less tech sector banks here in the United States of America. So a little bit of tinfoil on that bird walk, but it is possible. Last paragraph of the brief. What about truth in the news? If AI could impact writers for fictional stories, why not the stories that are supposed to be factual? Supposed to be factual. And by the way, I just have to I just have to throw this in there. New reports out today that the FBI knew and admitted to news agencies in October of 2020. So, a month before the presidential election between Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. and Donald J. Trump. A month before that election, Trump's second election, where Biden, the most popular president in American history with air quote 81 million votes, asterisk, won, the FBI admitted a month before that in a meeting with heads of national media outlets in the United States of America, that they knew that the Hunter Biden laptop was real and that the content on it was unaltered. And yet they continued to push the line that there's the possibility that this is Russian disinformation to skew the election. Now, I'm not surprised that the Federal Bureau of Investigation engaged in partisan politics here and covered up Biden's son's laptop story so that it wouldn't negatively impact Biden's run for the White House. That doesn't surprise me. But here we are almost three years later getting verification of the fact that the FBI, in fact, did know at the time, at a crucial moment before the election, that Hunter Biden's laptop was real and that the crimes that he is depicted committing on that laptop were real and unaltered. And yet they still told mass media here in the United States of America that we are going with the possibility that this could be altered due to Russian um, interference with our sovereign elections, free and fair elections here in the United States of America. There was no Russian collusion. 
there was Demo democratic collusion with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Fact. You probably won't hear that talked about a whole lot in the mass media because it implicates them in election fraud. But yeah, that just came out within the last 24 hours. Back to AI. Google spokesperson Jen Kreider said of AI, quote, these tools are not intended to and cannot replace the essential role journalists have in reporting, creating, and fact-checking their articles. That sounds great, but the media has been hit with round after round of layoffs as print advertising revenues have imploded. Now, the AI-enabled tools intended to help journalists are unsettling some news executives, according to the Times. It's not just about another upheaval in the labor market. There's also the simple concern that for consumers of all media, it's nearly impossible to distinguish reality from generated fiction. If news and entertainment are generated from some churning, mindless monolith, truth would rapidly become indistinguishable from falsehood. If news and entertainment are generated from some churning, mindless monolith, Truth would rapidly become indistinguishable from falsehood. Then, the influence held by the few humans left to work with these machines could have significantly magnified power to sway the tides of politics and society as a whole. That is your brief for today. Programming notes. Yesterday I put up a video on the sound of freedom and I, the vast majority of comments were very good. And with all due respect, I don't speak my mind for approval in the comments section. But I do appreciate it when we align ideologically, you and I. A lot of people said, but bear you should reach out to Operation Underground Rescue. They could help you. You could talk to them, they could help you. Ladies and gentlemen of the Bear Nation, if you don't think that I haven't been in contact with Operation Underground Rescue for longer than I have been talking about what we do with Caleb House on camera, you have underestimated me severely. I've had dinner with those people. I have hundreds of emails back and forth with those people. I've met them face to face on several occasions. I have in my phone a list of contacts from Operation Underground Rescue that goes all the way to the top. And for whatever reason, thus far, OUR has seen unfit to contribute a dime to what Caleb House does. So, if you'd like to see OUR contribute a dime to what Caleb House does, my recommendation would be y'all should reach out to OUR and put an earbug in their ear and say, hey, why aren't you working with Caleb House? A restoration facility for juvenile human trafficking survivors that has that is being built specifically to OUR's aftercare specifications. How do I have their aftercare specifications? I've been talking to them for three years. I've done everything I know how to do on my end. If you'd like to see us work together, contact them. If every single person who watched this brief contacted them and said, hey, you need to get with Caleb House. They're doing something about human trafficking. That might carry some weight. But please don't underestimate the efforts that I've made off camera on behalf of Caleb House. I can tell you with certainty anybody who's a player in the anti-human trafficking space, I'm aware of them. And the righteous ones, I've reached out to. 
on multiple occasions. And with that, that's the brief for today. If you're one of those people that jumps off when it's time to discuss the value exchange, you're probably one of those people that doesn't even know what Caleb House does. This is your invitation to beat feet. Skedaddle. Get out of here. Have a blessed day. Go about your business. Shalom. Everybody else, links are in the description. Patreon this morning, we discussed leaders versus followers. I thought it was a pretty good video. Patreon is $5 per month. At the end of this month, the $5 tier is going away. So if you want to get in and be grandfathered at the $5 tier, I recommend you do that before the end of the month. It is a preparedness consultancy. You ask the questions, I give the answers. You have far more access to me and there's far more in-depth content at Patreon than there is here on YouTube when it comes to preparedness, faith, homesteading, business, and everything else that we talk about here at this channel. Refuge Medical, summer fun giveaway is going on right now. Every order over $89 is automatically entered to win four season passes, year-long passes, to any Six Flags Park in the United States of America, a Yeti cooler made in the United States of America, two Refuge Medical hydration kits, which are Nalgene bottles with the Refuge logo on them with oral rehydration salts, and Jocko Hydration uh, included in the hydration kit, two Refuge Medical Boo Boo kits, and a family tourniquet pack, which is two cats, two soft tea tourniquets, and two SWAT tees, stretch wrap and tuck tourniquets, which work great on children. You offer bid you ever need a tourniquet for a child, but the SWAT tee works really, really well on small people. Right now, the kit of the week, as I understand it, is the bare minimum at Refuge Medical, which is always HSA and FSA eligible. The bare minimum is the perfect combination of boo-boo kit and trauma kit. It has your Generation 7 genuine cat tourniquet, real cat tourniquet in it a pressure bandage, gloves, sharpie, wound packing, gauze, chest seals, uh, airway, burn dressing for, you know, massive bleeding, airway, respiration, uh, circulation, you know, most of the March algorithm for trauma medicine, whether that's a car wreck or a gunshot or uh, you rolled an ATV in the woods or a workplace accident or whatever. Trauma medicine, the primary indicator being massive bleeding, massive hemorrhage. So, oh shit, bleeding, bare minimum has it covered. But it also has <coughs> band-aids, because Susie fell off of her bike, steri strips for wound closure, gauze and tape for larger boo-boos, um, you know, OTC wipes, you know, sting relief and povidone iodine and rubbing alcohol etc so it's got the boo-boo stuff and wound closure plus trauma medicine stuff and it's one of our most affordable kits so i recommend you check that out at refugemedical.com and just a little bit of show and tell on this chest rig is the first ever arc gen zero arc it's the final arc that advanced ripaway kit that we put together before we went to production. This one is mine. There are not many of them. This one is mine. And the ARC, the Advanced Ripaway Kit, this one has been on this chest rig and has done more training stuff in a year than most people who are not active duty will do in a lifetime. And look, it still works. So, in the ARC, You've got a cat tourniquet, right? Combat application tourniquet, Generation 7, North American Rescue, legit real tourniquet. You've got shears. I've got decompression needles. You've got two pairs of chest seals, wound packing gauze, quick clot, duct tape, pressure bandage, all of that. 
designed to work one or two casualties. And what's cool about the arc is if you get the dangler, you can attach it to your cool guy gear, your chest rig, plate carrier, war belt, whatever. But it also comes with headrest straps to mount behind the headrest in your car. And so you can get the arc plus the dangler and you can have it mounted on the headrest in your car. Um, and it mounts in such a way that even during a head-on collision, the kit stays attached to the headrest. So I have a purpose-built trauma medicine kit right here in my vehicle that I can reach with one hand if I need to, to get it out in case of emergency. And then when I'm not driving, if I'm going to train or whatever, I'm out in the woods doing things, I can take it off of the mount on the headrest, put it on the dangler attachment, sold separately, and attach it to my chest rig, plate carrier, war belt, whatever. And so the modularity of the arc and the fact that it'll work one or two casualties makes it a really good kit. So you might check that out as well. Refuge Training is in the midst of doing an essential responder today. They're doing responder three today. And uh, if you want to learn the fine art of how to not die, come to class, refugetraining.com. We have classes, upcoming classes in September and October in Idaho and in Indiana. And then it will be springtime at a minimum before we hit the road again because we have a slew of private classes that we need to perform for agencies and departments as well as some individuals. So if you're interested in a private class, if you can get 10 or more people together for class, email sales at refugetraining.com. If you'd like to come to class here in eastern Oklahoma, and we have big things coming for refuge. We are working on a dedicated training facility for refuge in the next 60 days. Something similar, long term, something similar to where I am right now to be able to provide. So we teach TAC Med, tactical medical, right? Uh, for military applications and law enforcement applications, that's TCCC, tactical combat casualty care. For the civilian sector, EMS and fire, that is TECC, Tactical Emergency Casualty Care. We're also partnering with a couple of really good instructors because right now we're 80% medical, 20% tactical. We're also partnering with some really good instructors to go 80% tactical, 20% medical. So right now we have Responder 1, 2, and 3 we will be launching early 2024 at a dedicated training facility, Defender 1, 2, and 3, as well as a host of other classes, as well as an online academy for refuge for all of y'all who have been like, I just can't, circumstantially, I cannot come to class. Well, you can become a member of the Refuge Academy online and have access to all that curriculum and online training courses, et cetera, et cetera. So big things coming with refuge training. In the meanwhile, you offer bid, you need those skills in between now and spring 2024, come to class, come see us in Eastern Oklahoma, refugetraining.com. And lastly, but certainly not least, Grindstone Ministries and Caleb House, links in the description. If you've gotten motivated to do something about human trafficking in the recent past, visit calebhouse.org. Caleb with a K. Links in the description. K-A-L-E-B house.org. Super shareable. Some really good stats and information there. You want to plug in and do something? calebhouse.org. That is our juvenile human trafficking restoration facility. It's a bunch of $50 words for we rescue and restore children and put them back together again after they've been seriously raped by assholes. And that is a lifetime commitment. Our program has no, there's no timeline associated with it. Because I'm not going to tell a four-year-old they have a year to get their shit together and then kick them back out again. I'm not doing that. Our goal is to break generational curses and forsake not the widow and the orphan. 
and that's what we're doing. And we need help. Caleb with a K house.org. There are also links to Caleb House t shirts, long sleeves, and hoodies. Our brother Saw's Facts Not Feeling shirt. And our brother Rex's The Real Dope shirt. The proceeds of which all go to help fund ongoing operations at Caleb House as well as build the restoration facility. I told you all how I feel about the sound of freedom in that video yesterday. So if you haven't seen that, go watch it. We're going to keep doing what we do. Praise the Most High. We've always gotten everything we needed when we needed it. And most of what we wanted when we wanted it for this lifelong mission of restoring the least of these. I don't like the fact that anti-human trafficking is in vogue and the main reason I don't like that is because it should never have to be in vogue. I'm grateful that more people are waking up to the reality of this problem but I wish the problem never existed in the first place. And so we will continue to work until we've worked ourselves out of a job or I'm dead. And that mission, day by day by day, consumes more and more and more of my time. And so I can say with confidence, there will come a point where that's the only thing I do. And that's okay. He who can be trusted with little can be trusted with much. Parable of the talents. And so praise Yah for whatever reason he saw fit to give a scumbag like me the giftings and talents and delights required to be his hands and feet with this. And if you want to help, get at us. That's a brief for, for today. It's Monday. Go out there and kick a bunch of ass. And the Father's telling me we should pray, so we're going to Good morning, Father Yah. Father, thank you for all this. Father, thank you for all of the blessings, even when they feel like burdens. Father, I pray that you would make me the man that I need to be today to be able to shoulder the responsibility of these blessings and to steward them righteously. Father, I pray that you'd pour out your spirit on everybody within the sound of my voice that you would make yourself manifested in ways that are glorious and undeniable. Father, that you, we would remember that you are God. You are Elohim. You are the great I Am. And Father, no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and that your will will be made done, and your word will not return to you void. Father, I thank you for loving us enough to kill yourself, that we would have a way to come home again. And I thank you for knowing us since before we were born and having a plan for us, for redeeming us from the foundation of the world, that we might be your hands and feet, that we might be your mouth, that we might participate in the mercy of servitude to you, rather than just simply be utterly destroyed and removed from your presence forever. Father, give us strength and power and authority in the name of Yeshua. Send your Ruach for peace and wisdom and understanding. Fill us up, Father. 
Let us be a witness to the world of how truly awesome and loving you are. Father, order our steps. Point us in the right direction and convict us in which way we should go. Father, give us this day our daily bread. Please remember us as we do our best to remember you. Thank you for loving us in our brokenness. Show us what we need to see. Let us hear what we need to hear. And Father, please do not remove your hand from us, but continue to teach us and lead us that we might walk in the steps of Yeshua Messiah. Thank you for this thing called life. Father, I pray that you would minister to everybody who's struggling within the sound of my voice. I lift them up to you and I lay them at your feet. And I beg mercy and forgiveness. Father, I love you. You are incredible. And I thank you for all these things. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Y'all have a blessed day. Shalom.